Hi there! In this video, we are going to discuss additional ideas about sound. If you haven't watched our previous video discussing the most important details about sound, you can pause this video and watch that one first. In our last discussion, we learned that sound is a form of mechanical wave, specifically a longitudinal wave. In this video, we are only going to talk about longitudinal and transverse waves. Let's do this activity. Prepare a slinky spring and have one end fixed. You can ask someone to hold it for you. And the other end movable. Move it up and down or sideways. Next, move the slinky by giving it a sudden push and pull. Observe and differentiate what happens. The first activity you did was replicating how a transverse wave looks like. And on a second activity, you replicated how a longitudinal wave looks like. There are many characteristics common to both transverse waves and longitudinal waves. The difference is in the motion of particles with respect to the direction of travel of the wave. In a transverse wave, the movement of particles are perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. On the other hand, in a longitudinal wave, travel is parallel to the movement of particles. Now let's talk about the parts of a longitudinal wave and transverse wave. The region where the coils are pressed together in a longitudinal wave is called a compression. On the other hand, the region where the coils are spread out is called rarefaction. The maximum displacement of the particles of the medium from their equilibrium position is called the amplitude of a wave. Meanwhile, wavelength is the distance between two successive compressions or rarefactions. In a transverse wave, the highest point is the crest, while the lowest point is called trough. Wavelength is the distance between two crests, while the amplitude, same as in the longitudinal wave, is the maximum displacement of the particles of the medium from their equilibrium position. An example of a transverse wave is light. Let's move on to another additional topic about sound. We'll now talk about the properties of sound. Sound has very amazing contributions to life. Ultrasound, which is most commonly used during pregnancy, utilizes the principle of the reflection of sound waves. A lot of people love to sing inside a bathroom because of privacy, and also because they feel that their voice sounds better. This is because the hard wall surfaces of the bathroom, which are usually made of wood or tile, brings about multiple reflections of sound. These hard walls or surfaces and the small dimension of the bathroom typically create an orally pleasing acoustic environment, with many echoes and reverberations contributing to the fullness and depth of voice. Reflection is usually described as the turning back of a wave as it hits a barrier. Echo is an example of reflected sound. Reverberation, on the other hand, refers to the multiple reflections or echoes in a certain place. A reverberation often occurs in a small room with height, width, and length dimensions approximately 17 meters or less. In theaters and movie houses, there are also reverberations and echoes, but these are not pleasing to the ears during a play or a movie. To lessen these, designers use thick curtains and cloth covers for the chairs and carpets. Echo sounding is another application of sound reflection. This is used by scientists to map the seafloor and to determine the depth of the ocean or sea. Have you ever wondered why open field concerts are usually held during nighttime? Having concerts at night gives a chance for everyone to see and enjoy the live show because there is no work and no school. But sound also plays a major part in the scheduling of these concerts. Usually, sound is heard better in far areas during nighttime than during daytime. This concept utilizes the principle of refraction of sound. 
From what we learned in the previous video, sound travels faster in a hotter medium. This change in the speed of sound when it encounters a medium of different density during refraction is also manifested as a sort of bending of sound waves. When sound propagates in air, where the temperature changes with altitude, sound bends towards the hotter region. In this case, refraction happens. The refraction is due to the different refractive indices of air because of the difference in temperature. During the day, when the sun is shining, the air near the Earth's surface is cooler than the air above. Because of this, sound would move from the cooler region, which is the Earth's surface, towards the hotter region, which is the air above. Thus, sound waves will be refracted to the sky. At nighttime, the air near the Earth's surface is warmed by the heat emitted from the ground, making it hotter than the air above due to the absence of sun during nighttime. This makes sound move from the cooler air above towards the hotter air near the Earth's surface. Thus, sound waves are refracted to the Earth's surface. This makes open field concerts better done during nighttime as sound waves are refracted from the stage towards the audience. This gives the crowd clearer and more audible music to enjoy. Now let's wrap things up. Sound waves are examples of longitudinal waves. Sound reflection is the turning back of a wave as it hits a barrier, while sound refraction is the change in speed of sound when it encounters a medium of different density which is also called the bending of sound waves. That's all for now. See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.